What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today I got five exercises that's going to increase your throwing velocity. Make sure you stay tuned. Check this one out. Coming in at number one may not be a surprise to you. You know, if you've been following me for a little while now, it is the rear foot elevated or Bulgarian split squat. There's nothing else like it. I've never seen an exercise, a strength exercise, transfer over to the baseball field more than this move. Guys come in, they start to build their strength up in this exercise, directly results, directly correlates to their rotational power, exit velos, and throwing velocities. So Texel's gonna come in here. I like using the safety bar. You can use a uh, regular barbell or dumbbells, but the thing with dumbbells is your grip strength oftentimes becomes a limiting factor. So say you got, you know, go up to 100 pounds with dumbbells with rear foot elevated. That's only 200 pounds on the lower half. Our goal for elite level throwers is to at least be able to get two times our body weight, nice strict reps on the split squat. So Texel, how much you weigh? Uh, 195 pounds, call it 200. Texel should eventually, we're gonna try to build him up, get 400 plus pounds on this. Go ahead and hit. Rear foot elevated, I have one of these pads. If you don't, you can use a bench. Then Texel's gonna spread his foot out. The further that front foot goes out, the more of the posterior chain he's gonna hit. If that foot comes in, he's gonna get hit more with a quad, the VMO. It's all what you're lacking, but I've never met a good ball player with a weak posterior chain, so I like to spread that toe out. Now you're gonna sit down and back. Good. Nice. This here is an exercise we load the crap out of, progress the crap out of, because I see that big correlation. Coming in at number two is the trap bar deadlift, because it's a really good way to build up that force potential. How I like to do a trap bar deadlift is a little bit different than what others teach. A lot of guys out there teach it's a hinge, so they call it two moves, right? It's a squat to hinge. For building big force, like you know, a baseball pitcher, baseball thrower landing on that front leg. I like to think of it as a one like in unison. So squat to pick it up. You're just gonna be able to produce a lot more force that way. So don't think of it as a hinge, think of it as a squat to pick it up. And on this exercise, we got guys, you know, loading this up to 600 pounds. Go ahead and hit it, Texel. Chest up, squat to pick it up. Good. Nice. All right, rest for a sec. So I like this big rogue trap bar because the handles are high, so he's not pulling from such a deficit. Problem with, you know, other trap bars like this one here, or like your typical uh, everyday trap bar or hex bar that you see in other gyms, is that it's a low handle. So in that deeper joint angle, you're not able to produce a whole lot of force. Think about, you know, a pitcher on the land leg. They're not landing in a deep squat position. So why would we train that angle when we're trying to build most force at that? So to make a long story short, reason I like using these high handles is because we can load a lot more weight on the bar, building more joint angle specific force. Coming in at number three is a medicine ball drill or exercise. All med ball drills, rotational, linear, et cetera, are gonna be good and incorporate to your throwing velocity. However, this one's one of my favorites and I see that direct correlation. This is a kneeling, linear throw. The entire goal is to get up over that firm front side. So the biggest velocity killer that I see with my athletes is that land leg, that front leg. A lot of them, you know, throw and dissipate into the ground. You can't do that. You want a strong, firm lead blocking leg. So that's something that we can control in the weight room that's gonna directly correlate to their skill when they're on a mound throwing. So right here, the cue is gonna be for Texel to rock back straight overhead. So rock back to start it. Then he's gonna slam this front foot down and his goal is to almost do a hamstring pullback. They call it the Otani clawback. If you ever watch Otani throw, at land, he almost pulls himself up over his front side. So it looks like bah, they call it the Otani clawback. So we're gonna do the same thing. I call this the Otani drill with this uh, kneeling med ball overhead throw. So go ahead and hit it. 
good. So see how Texel gets up over that front leg and then clears it, which accelerates his torso through the ball, then through the wall. Go ahead and hit it. Good. Nice. And then with this exercise here, I like to use a lighter med ball. So right now we're using a four. I like to go six and I won't go any heavier than eight just because velocity is the key. So we're trying to throw that thing as hard as we can. Coming at number four, pull-ups. All elite throwers should be able to do pull-ups and should be incorporating them into their program. Why? Because it's good in that deceleration component. A lot of injuries while throwing happens from that recoil, that deceleration, as we know. So what better way to do that than get a good back exercise and a body weight pull-up. Another reason that I really like pull-ups in elite level throwers is because if you know an athlete just works his back constantly, does you know heavy bodybuilder style rowing, you know, lat pull downs, etc., they're gonna tighten up the lats. Tight lats inhibit the athlete to extend overhead. This is, you know, my thesis behind Chapman. You know, why his velocity has suffered uh, recently over the past couple years is because, you know, if you look into his training, I think it's a direct correlation. The guy's been training like a bodybuilder right now, you know, pumping up, doing high hypertrophy stuff, behind the neck presses, you know, low hammer rows, just tightening up everything without keeping that long athletic muscle that got him to where he was. So with a pull-up, not only are we strengthening the lats, but we are lengthening them. So Tex will go ahead and get up here. I'm gonna show you how I think you should be doing pull-ups. So first we're gonna fully lengthen, come to that bottom position and then pull from there. So go ahead and pull from there. Good. Now you're gonna come all the way down to that lengthened position again, cause you wanna keep that length of the lat and then pull up from there. Good. Hit a couple more. Nice. Good, call it. And if you notice too, I like going neutral grip just cause it puts the you know elbows in a more comfortable position. If you go underhand grip, sometimes it can kind of flare up some elbow issues. Overhand grip is good. It's just harder to you know pull from. So typically I go ahead, add these neutral grip pull-ups into the program because we're not just worried about strength, right? Strength is good. However, strength doesn't mean anything if we don't keep the length. Coming in at number five is a cable chop variation. All your gyms should have some sort of cable, whether it be a free motion, Kaiser, etc. So today we're gonna use the Kaiser. I think it's the best having that air resistance. If you don't, just go ahead and set up bands. Okay, if you caught the memo, you know, of all these exercises, the biggest thing I like to focus on, you know, when building an elite level thrower is that gas leg and the brake leg. So here we're focusing on that brake leg that's gonna transfer that energy from the ground out through the ball. So with the cable, we're gonna go a high set or band if you have it. And then Texel's gonna go underhand grip and then overhand grip on the uh, this part of the cable. And he's gonna hug a BOSU ball. I like to hug a BOSU ball because it keeps the um, pressure further away from your center of mass. So you're gonna get more out of the exercise. If you were tight, you're not gonna have as much room to create that space. So he's gonna hug this ball, go underhand, overhand. Now simple, he's just gonna stride out like he's throwing a ball. So go ahead and try it out first. Stick the landing. From here, he's gonna snap down and across while at the same time, pulling this leg through as the brake leg. So go ahead and hit it fast. Good. Even come down more. Good. Nice. So as he's transferring that rotational energy, that front leg is stopping it up the kinetic chain and releasing it down into the cable. Go ahead and hit a couple more. Good. That strong, stiff front leg. That's what we're looking for on this exercise. Take a breather. So you can do different things with this, right? I like pulling from high to low for throwers. You know, if you're a hitter, you can go ahead and tick this down and do the same exact thing. And it's gonna be more rotational, right? Instead of rotational linear, but you can hit all angles here. So go ahead and hit that angle. Good. 
Nice. You're just getting different angles to pull from. Then you can even go lower with it and then pull up through. So the adjustability on this exercise is money. Good. Nice. But again, that key focus is that lead breaking leg and throwers. I like going down, up, and over the top, just like you know you're on a mound throwing. Hey, that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Those are five exercises that I utilize with my pitchers in here to increase their throwing velocity. If you want access to some of the same training methods and programs that I use with my big leaguers, my pro players, my college softballers, etc., I have a number of programs available for you. I'll put those in the link in the description for you. Also, always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week, so do me a favor and subscribe. I appreciate you. We'll catch you next week. Game rewards the grind. It knows how much you've invested.